In this video I will explain how to set up your Silver 5000 series HMI to communicate with your PLC or controller and demonstrate creating a simple test project to verify communication. Before beginning the process of configuring the HMI, gather all the necessary information and documentation. The first thing you will need to know is the model of HMI and PLC you are using, how you intend to connect them, and what protocol you will be using. For this demonstration I will be using an HMI 5070TH and an Allen Bradley Micrologix 1100 with the DF1 protocol over RS-232. To access the necessary information that will later be used to configure the HMI, visit our website at www.maplesystems.com and select Support Center. Click the Controller Info Sheets link and scroll down to locate your PLC. In this case we're using an Allen Bradley Micrologix 1100 DF1 serial. So I'll select Silver Series and that'll pull up a PDF file containing all the necessary information for configuring my HMI to communicate with the Allen Bradley Micrologix DF1. As I scroll down through this document you'll see uh, information on communication cables, PLC settings, accessible memory, and easy builder settings. These are the settings that you'll use to configure the communications on the HMI. In addition to the controller information sheet, it's also necessary to locate the controller cable diagram for your specific uh, application. In this case, I'll select the Allen Bradley Micrologix 1100. I'm going over RS-232 and I've got an 8-pin DIN connector on my controller. So I know that for the HMI 5000 series, which is what I'm using, I want the 7446-0040 cable. Clicking on that link for the appropriate cable gives you the cable diagram. So you can confirm that you've got the correct cable before starting or just uh, bookmark or, or print out the cable diagram so that you can reference it for later use. To begin the process of creating a test project for uh, verifying communication between your HMI and your PLC, open Easy Builder 5000, select your HMI model, and click OK. The System Parameter Settings window will appear, and on the Device tab, select New, and enter the appropriate information. Now the information for this particular screen here, for the Device Properties window, will come from that controller information sheet. So let's click back on the controller information sheet. On the controller information sheet, if we scroll down to the EasyWare settings, you'll see that uh, the name of the driver we're looking for is the Allen Bradley Slick 500 and Micrologix DF1. We'll be selecting HMI or PLC. Uh, our setting will be PLC and the location will be local. So if I click back over to my Easy Builder application. PLC type is going to be Allen Bradley Slick 500 Micro DF1 Serial CRC. PLC, we'll select PLC from HMI and PLC and location local. We're using RS-232 and if I tab back to that controller information sheet We'll see that a lot of these uh, settings here in this table uh, refer to the PLC for the appropriate settings. So you've got to know your your PLC settings, and you can get that you know off the off the PLC or in the PLC programming software. In this case, I know that my baud rate is uh, 19.2, so I'll select settings and change my baud rate to 19.2. Then I've I know that my data bits are eight, eight data bits, parity is none, and my stop bits one. Now I'm going to confirm that with my PLC uh, to make sure. Click OK. And I'll click OK again here. And click OK one more time to take me back to the development window. For the process of creating a test project, we want to make sure that we only have one object on the screen so that uh, 
we're only trying to address one register in the PLC. This eliminates the question of whether or not any communication issues are address related or you know, comm settings or cabling related. It just helps narrow down uh, the variables. So to add an object to my screen, I'm going to select Objects. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a word lamp. So I'll select word lamp. For my PLC name, I'm going to select my Alan Bradley. And then my addressing is, again, going to come from that controller information sheet. So let me tab back to that. I'll scroll up, up to my accessible memory. And I'm going to go with an N7. So my format, which is listed on the format column in my table here, you can see that it's DDD, referring to three decimal integer places. Now I want address 1. So for my N7, I need to put in a 001. And then I click OK. And I'll place my object on the screen. Now at this point for my test project, I really don't care what this shape looks like. I just want something on my screen that'll be displayed if I'm communicating. Now in the HMI 5000 series products, if you've got an object on your screen, but you're not communicating with your PLC, the object will not be displayed. So I'm going to add some text to my project, just so that uh, if we don't have communication with our PLC, we'll at least know the project was downloaded properly. To add text, I'll select the draw menu, select text, verify that I got the font that I want, color, I'm going to change the size a little bit here, and I'll put in my PLC model name. I'll place my text and then I'll save my project. And I'll compile my project. Verify I have no errors, no warnings. And then I'll download my project to my HMI. Once I have the project downloaded into the HMI, I simply need to connect the communication cable from the HMI to the PLC and verify the communications. Uh, to demonstrate this, I'm going to log into my HMI using a VNC viewer application. Enter in my password. And you can see that I've got a PLC no response message and my object is not appearing on my HMI. The reason for that is I don't have the cable connected. So if I connect my cable, you'll see the PLC no response message will go away and the object appears on my screen. This indicates that I have communication with my PLC. If I disconnect the cable again, you can see I'll get the PLC no response message back up. And my object still appears because it just displays the last state, the last known state. So, But I do know that I do not have communication because I got the PLC no response message. Now if you do get the PLC no response message, we've got a pretty detailed explanation of what can cause that on our website under the Support Center Frequently Asked Questions section. I get a PLC no response error, what can be wrong? For more information, please visit our website at www.maplesystems.com.